colitis. Well, looks like the chaps from Argentina haven't made it. All right, do we have our, the next speaker, Dr. Rather, to present loop ileostomy closure after prior laparoscopic versus open surgery. Is there a difference from Cleveland Clinic, Florida? Good morning, and thank you for inviting me. My uh, title is uh, loop ileostomy closure after initial laparoscopic versus open surgery, if there's a difference. I have no disclosures. Uh, introduction. Loop ileostomy is a commonly performed procedure in colorectal surgery, and uh, even though it is a relatively simple procedure, but uh, it's not always straightforward. In a review of around 26 studies, catered person, they found that there's a significant morbidity associated with this procedure, with a small bowel obstruction ranging from 0 to 15 percent, wound infection 0 to 18 percent, uh, an asthmotic leak anywhere from 0 to 8 percent, and endocrine fistula rates of 0 0.5 to 7 percent. The aim of our study was to see if there's a difference between the, the, uh, between the laparoscopic versus the open group when we do the loop ileostomy closure, if the outcomes are any different between the two groups. All patients who underwent loop ileostomy at Cleveland Clinic, Florida, between uh, January 2008 and uh, July 2010 were identified from a prospectly collected database, and uh, we had around uh, 351 patients. Uh, our methodology, we looked at uh, primary outcomes, which included operative time, hospital stay, post-op complications, and secondary outcomes, we looked at the adhesion, if there's any impact of uh, use of uh, seprofil, and whatever our conversion rates in the two groups. We use certain definitions in our methodology. Uh, what does conversion mean? Typically, the way we close loop ileostomy is we make a peristomal incision, uh, mobilize a small bowel, and do a, once we have an adequate length, we do a side-to-side -side anastomosis with the use of a stapler. Um, Post-op alias in our study was defined as uh, someone who required uh, a NG tube or uh, NPO status or had three episodes of MSS in the 24-hour period. We excluded patients who had a reversal as a part of multiple procedures or patients who had intra-abdominal complications following initial surgery. And we used chi-square and student's t-test and a p-value of 0 0.05 was uh, less than 0 0.05 was considered to be significant in our study. This is the demographic data we had. We had a total of about 351 patients, and uh, these were divided into two groups, laparoscopic, which included both lap-assisted as well as totally lap laparoscopic surgery, and open surgery. Uh, we had around 145 patients in the laparoscopic group and about 206 patients in the open group. And uh, the criteria for dividing uh, was based on uh, sur surgeon preference. They, some of the patients who had uh, low rectal cancer, some of the surgeons were more comfortable doing open rather than uh, doing a lapis you know, starting laparoscopic. And any, pr any uh, procedure which was converted from laparoscopic to open was considered as, op <coughs> was considered as open surgery. We looked at age. Uh, and our mean age was around 50 years in the laparoscopic group, which is pretty similar to what we had in the open group as well. Uh, gender was, again, uh, there was no significant difference between the two groups. BMI of 24 and 25, this just goes to show that we do a lot of patients with IBD, and, uh, uh, and then as, as you look at ASA classification as well, most of our patients were in, in ASA 2. The diagnosis was benign in, uh, again, the groups were comparable as, as far as the diagnosis was concerned. Uh, our results, we looked at the operative data. We had, again, the two groups comparable with regards to uh, ileal pouch, uh, patients who underwent a respiratory parctocolectomy with ileal pouch and uh, anastomosis. The two groups were, again, comparable uh, as far as the patients who underwent colonic pouch. Uh, and others. The others usually uh, included patients who had 
uh, a straight low anterior section without a pouch or who had surgery for um, diverticulitis or surgery for who had a protective ileostomy for fistula. Uh, the operative outcomes, we looked at the operative time and uh, the laparoscopic, uh, in the laparoscopic group we had a mean time of around 60.9 minutes and this was um, in, the, in the open group, this was about 82.6 minutes, and this was statistically, statistically significant um, in, in our study. Uh, we looked at the length of the stay, and this was 4.9 days in the laparoscopic group, and was 5.8 uh, days in the open group. Again, this was statistically significant. Uh, but, uh, there was statistically significant difference in the two groups. We also looked at conversion. Uh, as I mentioned, the conversion was uh, from a peristomal uh, incision to a midline incision. And there were about six patients in our study who required a, a conversion to midline. Um, in, in certain uh, patients, we had to extend uh, the incision, make a small extension around the peristomal site, but there, there were six patients who did need a midline conversion. We used a Seprafilm in four patients in the laparoscopic group, and this is at the initial surgery. And uh, we had uh, uh, 11 patients in the open group. This was done just to see if uh, the use of seprafilm has any influence on the outcome. Again, this, is, this was not statistically significant in our study. Uh, then we looked at complications in the laparoscopic group. The total number of complications we had were 21. While as in the open group, the total number of complications we had 49, and this was again uh, significant between uh, uh, in our study. Uh, Post-op alias, uh, the number of patients we had was 13, and uh, in the laparoscopic group, and uh, 28 in the open group, and this we found was a significant factor in our length of stay as well. Patients who had post-op alias. Uh, typically, they stayed in the hospital for a longer time, and that was also significant in our study. To conclude, our uh, outcomes uh, in between two groups at the time of loop ileostomy closure, we found that patients who had initial laparoscopic surgery had shorter operative time, had shorter hospital stay, and less post op complications as compared to open group. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions from the floor? Um, I, in the, yes, go ahead. Oh, I, this is a great presentation. Um, did you consider uh, doing laparoscopic ileostomy closures, or what's your idea about that, especially with the open cases where you had a lot of intercutaneous fistulas and uh, uh, things like that? In our study, we did not, we specifically looked at, uh, you know, open loop ileostomy closure, and we don't consider laparoscopic uh, ileostomy closure at this time. What do you think is the reason for the difference? I think I know the answer, but... Well, it could be adhesions, as we all know, that in a laparoscopy has uh, decreased the, 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 the adhesion formation that I think, and that we found uh, maybe in subsequent studies, we may look at it again, uh, but uh, that may have a role to play, and uh, that probably was uh, one of the reasons that these patients uh, end up staying in the hospital less and having a less... Uh, operative time that at the time of closure? Um, where in, in my own practice, when I close an ileostomy in a patient who's had a previous, for example, laparoscopic proctocolectomy, I will actually laparoscope them again through the ileostomy takedown site to assess the extent of adhesions. Are you doing anything to assess adhesions in any of these patients? Not at this time, but uh, we do find that mm. when we you know, make the incision, it's very easy to mobilize the bowel and it falls right into the wound. You just have to do the superficial dissection and it's very, very easy to just take it out, have adequate length and just perform the anastomosis right there. Question from the floor. Shamir from Austria, thank you for this presentation. I would be happy if you could give us a sub-analysis